Good afternoon and uh, thanks to the organizer to have invited me to come and just meet with you to share our experience in cholera over the years, basically. <clears throat> so as all of you could sense that no one wants to put money on culturing. So everyone wants to go genomic or molecular like virology, but for bacteriology, Basically, uh, you, will, you will get a sense of why I'm telling that. Basically, when I look back, like when I started working on cholera back in the mid 80s, I started with culturing, basically. In those days, culturing was the only means. There was no PCR, nothing. And the RDT was not there in, the, in those days. So the dark field microscopy, I used to put my eyes on the dark field microscopy to see the shooting star movement of Vibrio cholerae. So that was the way we used to confirm immediate cholera, but culturing used to give us the insight on, I mean, whether this is cholera, confirmed cholera or not, anyway. So next slide, please. This is a chart I don't want to discuss. That there are two different like, you know, wing, like one is clinical sample, analysis of clinical sample, such as uh, rectal swab or maybe stool samples carried in Kerry Blair medium or environmental sample. Environmental also important, like, you know, since, since the transmission is uh, through the fecal oral mode of transmission, so the environment remains important. So there are different, like, you know, ways, but this is how we did, like, filtration through 1.22 micrometer filter could retain the bacteria, particular matters. So that can be enriched for six to eight hours and selective plating on TCBS, which is very common. Like, I mean, everywhere you can find a TCBS medium. There is no requirement of a autoclave. You can just boil and prepare because this is a selective media and do, there is no uh, like worry about like, you know, contamination. So TTGA is another medium. Uh, I will tell you why I'm talking about the TTGA. So when the, <clears throat> I have some, you know, illustration on this. So the selected, selected uh, culture, selective culture uh, states are then transferred to non-selective medium like GA. Then GA actually uh, supports the serology and followed by the strain collection and uh, isolation of DNA for molecules. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is very difficult to see, I, I know, from behind. So the clinical or environmental samples can be like, you know, either, you know, enriched or maybe if it is stool, you can directly use stool for uh, rapid detection for RDT. And RDT confirmed you know, samples are enriched in our case, then this enrich enrichment is six to eight hours or maybe maximum six hours. And then enrichment, enriched broth is then, you know, strict on the selective plate like TCBS. So TCBS yellow colonies, fermenting colonies are presumptive of cholera. And then this presumptive identification, sometimes we use TTGA uh, and then non-selective culture on GA will allow you to col collect the colony, isolate the colony, and that colony can be confirmed serologically. And then this colony can be used for isolating DNA for the molecular detection. Next slide, please. So the molecular detection can be like normal PCR, maybe there are many different ways we can do it. QPCR is another one. Uh, this slide I don't want to present because it, it just came, uh, uh, my colleague shared, but I, I, I don't want to present it anyway. Next slide, yeah. So you can see the colonies there, the streaking and colony. So the rapid dipstick positive colonies basically are, uh, rapid dipstick positive samples are streaked on TCBS and TTJ. So TCBS and TTJ are two different selective media. TCBS, we have done some work. TCBS is not fully supportive because it is inhibitory. The 
telluride salt is basically, basically inhibited to the you know cholera bacterium. So we have published a paper on this uh, in the PNS. You can see if you need, if you want. So when we are targeting the environmentally uh, natural naturally occurring Vibrio cholerae bacterium, which actually persists in very stress condition, so TCBS seldom supports them. So TTGA actually supports them better. Like if you get one colony on TCBS, you will get 10 colonies on the TTGA. So keep, keep that in mind. So the TTGA colonies appear with black center. This is a typical colony. And this black centered colony can be presumptively identified as Vibrio cholerae. Next slide, please. So you can see on the left side, TTGA colonies with black center and the GA colonies are basically the colonies are not so prominent, uh, conspicuous here, little colony, GA colony. So gelatin uh, liquefaction positive is the indication of Vibrio cholerae. So you pick up the colony and then do the serology uh, with the serum, anti-serum. And on the, on, the, on the right side, you can see the negative control, so which is negative, but the clumping is an indication of the positive. So this serologically confirmed colonies are then picked up and we preserve in two different ways. One is, uh, oh. So on, on the left, oh, this is probably the, okay. So on the, on the left, you can see the T1N1 soft agar, which is used for storing the bacterium at room temperature. So if you use T1N1 soft agar, step the bacterium and put some paraffin oil on, on the top. So this will allow you to maintain the bacteria for many, many years. As in our experience, maybe 10 years. So you don't need to put them in minus 80. So in the resource limited setting, I think this is an advantageous thing for you to preserve a bacteria in room temperature. So the cryo, Preservation is done in the LB plus 30% glycerol for the minus 80, which is for the long term, like for as many years. Thank you. Next. So this, this is part of the, I mean, many will like, even Amanda will be covering the molecular detection. So I'm sharing our experience. Like you can see on the top, the molecular confirmation of Vibrio cholerae. So when you get a colony on the TTGA, or TCBS, and then serology is basically presumptive. So if it is a Vibrio cholerae, so that OMPW can tell you about the you know confirmation for for sure that this is Vibrio cholerae. And then in the middle you can see the multiplex. The upper panel, upper one is simplex piece here. The middle one is multiplex piece here. So the multiplex is done with the primer for O1 RAB, the O139 RAB or maybe WB, WBF, and then CTX, color toxin A gene. So this, uh, you can see the amplified product. So on the, on the, on the, uh, uh, on the, uh, 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 in the down panel, you can see the naturally occurring Vibrio cholerae bacterium was detected by PCR. So this is with the multiplex PCR. So this is what is giving you the insight on the uh, multiplex PCR in detection of confirming cholera bacterium, toxigenic Vibrio cholerae. Very simple, normal PCR. Next slide, please. This is what we do. So you know that Vibrio cholerae has, O1 has two biotypes, classical and altor. The classical disappeared many years ago. The altor has gained the classical traits in recent years. This is one of our publications showing that the altor bacteria was carrying classical biotype cholera toxin. So this is what is causing the outbreak now when a pandemic globally. So just one small change indicated on the, on the right side, like in the position in the CTXA position 39, uh, the tyrosine is replaced by histidine in classical strains, altor, altered altor strains. And in 69 position, isoleucine is uh, replaced by tyrosine. So these are the two different changes that can be, you know, uh, indicative of the 
alter delta that is that has gained the uh, classical biotype color toxin. So next slide, please. So this is um, simplex PCR that we employ to confirm the biotypes in our laboratory. So you can see on the on the left side. So the alter biotype. Uh, the 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 primers basically target the two biotypes. So you can see the control and the positive control. I mean, negative and positive control. So the amplification of this can be indicative of the biotypes. So we confirm the biotype. And on the left, on the right side, you can see RTX, which is present in basically altor bacterium, not in classical. So RTX PCR can also give you information about the you know biotype of the bacterium. Next slide, please. So these are the qPCR primers that we have in our position, we use in our laboratory. So we can uh, detect the RFB01 and also the uh, RFB0139. And also we use BIUB gene for you know detecting, for confirming Vibro quality by uh, quantitative PCR or RT-PCR. Next slide, please. So these are a few a snapshot of the, how we do it in our laboratory. So you amplified, you know, uh, uh, peaks for the vibrio quality confirmation by uh, QPCR. Next slide, please. So you can also you can also detect vibrio quality by by direct fluorescent monoclonal antibody. The green fluorescing bacteria indicates vibrio quality specific. These are our some of our publications. Next slide, please. So the Bibriolytic phages can be indicative of cholera. If the stool has lytic phages, you can use a host bibriocholery. And if, if there is plaque formation, that is indicative of bibriocholery. So no stool other than cholera will give you this lytic phage. So this is for sure. We have publication on this. Next slide, please. So this is a colony blot hybridization, which was aiding the culture, culture technique, which is very limited in supporting the vibro cholera growth. So the colony blot hybridization supported us to isolate toxigenic vibro cholera from environment. So next slide, please. So this is the largest whole genome project with vibro cholera isolated from environment. Five to 6,000 bacteria, vibro cholera O1. So this is a joint collaborative work with the Sanger Institute, Nick Thompson and also an Indian colleague, Nilam Taneza, we are working on this, this is progressing. And that, that was uh, possible because of our isolation of bibliocholery by culturing. Next slide, please. So this is VIUB that gives, you know, indication of the diversity of bibliocholery in the environment. So I don't want to talk more about this. Uh, so this is another, another, to another tool, another uh, target that you can use for, you know, isolating bibliocholery or confirming vibrio quality. So the pandemic generating, the whole genome sequencing, the last thing that I talk, want to talk about. So the whole genome sequencing allowed us to confirm two different lineages. As you can see here, I don't know if it is, it's not working. Anyway, so the upper, uh, upper actually three, uh, branches for the Asian lineage one, which is prominent in Dhaka. Asian lineage two was prominent in India. So this this is a recent publication actually in 2022. Next slide, please. So this, uh, in 2022, there was a big outbreak in Dhaka that was basically the historically largest, high, highest number of cholera patients came to Dhaka hospital of ICD-DRB. 1,500 patients per day. So in a matter of about one month, almost about 40,000 patients came. And that was a, I mean, tremendous pressure on the center, ICD-DRB hospital to handle. So we characterize the bacterium by whole genome sequencing. And you can see here, the, the bacterium was basically rooted to India. Basically, that is the route for the African you know, clone that was ongoing basically. So this paper appeared last month in Nature Communication. So you can read it 
to see the implication of the whole genome sequencing and use of the you know live bacteria. So I have the largest number of cholera bacteria in my collection, not only cholera, E. coli and other bacteria. I, I preserve them because of the requirement of the live bacteria to understand the you know, drug response and other phenotypic you know, characteristics that is important for us. Otherwise, you know, maybe some people will imagine, I mean, dream of just predicting the AMR pattern by the, you know, resistive analysis and other things. But practically speaking, if you are designing, if you are targeting intervention, so the AMR pattern is the immediate thing that you need to know to have a very right intervention. As I said, the two different clones, so the two different clones are very, very different. Please go and read it. And the vaccine intervention will not be successful unless you know about the clone. So this is something that I require, I request you to take care of. Thank you very much. Oh, this is, a, this is, a, this is another paper, recent paper, just last week published. So this paper shows the Bibro cholera one associated with recent endemic cholera shows temporal changes in serotype, genotype, and drug resistance pattern. So the green things show the ER, I mean, temporal changes in drug resistance pattern. So you can imagine it's changing all the time. So the, all the labs that are requiring this kind of support, like technical support, please ask me, I, I will be happy to support you because we have the mandate, ICD-DIB. We have the mandate to help any colleagues from all anywhere of the world. So please feel free and contact. Thank you very much.